All right, we're going to go ahead and add this new component, the U3, U4. So just go ahead and copy this into your L team designer. We're going to do a quick search. And here I um, just paste it in there. Notice that there is no model for this component, but I will save this component to my workspace and put this in the integrated circuit section. So the next thing is to um, make sure we have the right information and um, looks like I have to put in a different category here. Now I do want certain information. You have to check mark these. Okay. In fact, check mark whatever you want to add to your workspace and make sure that it's consistent with what the rest of your company uses, or, you know, just make sure you have a consistent set of parameters that you would be checking for. Okay. How you would compare, like these are things that you would use to compare the different devices in a spreadsheet, for instance, or, um, uh, available parts. Okay. So click okay when you're done with that. And then while we wait for it to load here, we've got, all right, yeah, this is, it's, it's come in now. All right. So this is the schematic symbol for the diode. We at least have that, but it doesn't have a PCB footprint associated with it by default. It does come with the part choices. Okay. And if you were to click on any of these, it'll take you directly to the part through Octopart. Now, if you're not using Octopart, now it took me directly to Mauser through the Octopart portal. But if you're not using Octopart, then you really should. Now here we have the PCB footprint, a schematic symbol and a 3D model for this device. What I would do is attempt to or try to download this. You can do that directly from the Mauser website or before doing that, see if they're available on DigiKey and an ultra librarian. So I prefer using the ultra librarian method because it's easier to like check in and download. And also the footprint style is more consistent for me. So I'd go here and click download and choose my 3d CAD model, put that in Altium designer, and then see how easy that it is. I don't have to like log in or for me, I don't know. It's just, it's just easier to log in. It's more consistent. So now once that's downloaded, I would open up the folder where it got downloaded to, right click and extract all of the files from this folder. And then we'll start the import process. Now this is the script method for importing a component. You would go to file and run script and Altium, ignore those other files in there and then choose from file. Once you, you know, go to your folders, make sure you navigate to the correct folder and then choose that UL and also click on it and click okay. Now they want a text file. You make sure you navigate to the folder where you downloaded it, not to the folder that pops up. It's easy, like it gets cached and it's easy to pick the wrong one. So start import, don't mind the error message, and then it will get imported. Then on the left pane, you'll see the import and um, that looks decent. Now I want to add the footprint, but before I do that, I need to actually check and see what got imported. And then you'd click on the uh, the uh, item PCB library. I'm just going to clean up some things here and add a proper smart reference designator instead of just the text. See where it says dot designator. And you want to put that on the top overlay layer. That is a silk screen. Make sure you save this so that it gets updated in the schematic symbol view, because if you don't save it, it it's like it won't be visible for whatever reason. I'm going to close the PCB library and then in, you know, in the um, here with the PCB footprint, you can just import this into your, into your, your network. So I'll click import. It gets imported as a footprint or part of the footprints thing or the footprints uh, group in your Altium 365 network. Okay. Now you can open the log for more information, but we'll just close that and we'll go into selecting our available footprints. So now that I've imported into my network and I look, go through models, it would be the most recent import by default in general, but you can go down to the bottom there and take a look at it and click okay. If that is the correct one. Now it gets associated with the part. I'm just going to modify this by clicking on this pencil button. See, now this is the version that's in my 365 environment. So now I'm going to add the 3d model, the step model here, and then place it onto, this is not the ideal way, the optimal way to add a 3d model to a PCB footprint. There's a snapping method. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a video on that, but I'm just going to eyeball it right now for the most part for the sake of the speed here. So we're going to right click and save this and close this footprint from our network. Okay. That's not the local, it's not the original locally imported one. Okay. So now that that's good, I have my PCB footprint and my 3d model, I'm going to extract any other information that I need from here. So here, this uh, base product part number looks interesting. Sometimes you need that to understand which family of products you're working with and any other information you might need from the 
from this design, uh, from this part. Okay, so I copy and paste the description from DigiKey into the name for the device and right click and save. I right click, close that and save. Then I will release this part and I need to add some kind of note and hit OK. Once this has been added, well, it, it goes through the process of adding it, you know, committing it to Git or however it does its thing on, on a, my Altium 365 network. This gets propagated to the rest of the team that can see my libraries. And now I can um, look for this part within my environment, like within my online environment and then add it to my schematic. So thanks so much for watching. This is the script method uh, to add this. You would check mark this as this is finished and we'll move on to the next part.